So basically I've done 360 miles in the two weeks. I'm a fair weather rider. So the tyres have been nicely scrubbed in now. And I've got a paddock stand, a KTM paddock stand, which just makes uh, things very easy uh, to do in the garage, i.e. oiling the chain or lubing the chain. So that's been done now. Uh, what I have done though in the first two weeks of ownership is the quick shifter was quite it was quite clunky actually so I don't know if the gearbox is bed again so the quick shifter has been switched off I've obviously lubed the chain we'll see if that makes any difference a bit later on uh, but I'm led to believe uh, until you have the first service the running in oil uh, comes out after the first service new oil comes in and possibly everything gets a little bit smoother but it is a twin cylinder engine and uh, maybe they are just a little bit clunky in the lower uh, revs when it comes to using the uh, quick shifter so one of the big things that I have done chaps looking at the uh, KTM forums is it was quite lumpy uh, in the low down revs uh, below 3,000 revs so you can see here I'm just chugging on at 15 miles an hour in first gear through our little country lanes here and basically what the forums are saying is uh, start the bike up walk away don't touch anything leave it for 15 minutes it recalibrates the fuel sensor or something so I've done that um, and that worked absolutely brilliant so if you haven't done that on your bike may I suggest that you do it and what I'm doing now just going through the little country lanes uh, here where I live where they have got a 15 mile an hour just to show you uh, that the uh, fueling is pretty much okay for a twin cylinder now actually it's uh, certainly a significant improvement uh, uh, upon where we were when I first had the bike in that first week so that's uh, that's something that I will thoroughly recommend that you guys do so what we do folks I'm just going to talk about the dislikes that I've come up with uh, in the first two weeks of ownership so the first one is this TFT screen I love the screen I love the layout but the thing I really gets really don't like is the fact that it will go light and day mode uh, automatically and you've got no control over it. I just wish KTM would sort that out. That's ridiculous. That should be an easy soft software fix. Uh, the indicator button, it doesn't really feel very positive. It's, uh, you can hardly feel it. That's a 50 pence item. I just wish they would uh, sort that out as well. There's a little bit of slack in the, um, the digital throttle. Um, you can get some spacer kits just to adjust that and take the slackness out so uh, I will more than likely do that just to make it a, a bit more uh, tight shall we say in the other videos I did make mention that I've adjusted the instrument cluster clutch lever brake lever and just dialed them in uh, for uh, my physicality shall we say I didn't have to adjust the gear shift lever um, but I did find that the brake lever was just slightly too high I know, I know not all of us use the brake lever um, but I wanted it to be uh, properly adjusted and what I was finding I was just having to raise my foot up uh, to find it so all you've got to do is just undo a couple of nuts on the brake lever itself and then that will actually uh, lower it once you've adjusted those uh, nuts and bolts that's a fairly uh, easy thing to do so the horn itself that is crap, I'm going to put a new one on there, like a Denali mini sound bomb or something. So that's going to be changed. I went for the slip-on uh, Acropovic exhaust. Uh, that's quite expensive, I can't remember how much it is, so I'll put it on up here. Um, I think it makes a little bit more noise, not much. Um, but it would be nice to have something with a, a little bit more oomph and noisiness to it. But uh, I don't want to attract the attention of the boys in blue. I'm a fair weather rider, so I don't like going out in the rain. I've been through a couple of very wet sections of road when they've been irrigating in the potato fields. And boy, oh boy, does this bike get absolutely splattered in muck. So it's been washed and it's been uh, dried down as well. Um, yeah, so I don't think it's a bike for <laughs> taking out <laughs> in too much rain, shall we put it like that. Uh, the suspension was set all to the standard settings but obviously where I live uh, you can see that the roads themselves aren't particularly brilliant uh, they've been opened up re so a lot of scarring uh, basically I felt like I was going to have all my fillings rattled out so uh, I've just dialed the suspension front and rear just softened everything off and I've got to say guys it makes a massive difference so if you're not into setting your suspension up I would say get a friend of yours and just get them to play around them with the suspension it makes a massive difference 
So that is something guys that you're definitely going to have to do otherwise you're not going to get uh, the benefit out of the bike. Obviously if you live somewhere the roads are like billiard tables really smooth you don't have to touch a thing uh, but for me over here you can just see the scarring of the roads um, yeah dialing a bit more softness into the spinch from front and rear uh, it's made the world of difference and the bike uh, is absolutely brilliant now uh, bearing in mind you've got very good WP uh, suspension on the 890R and for every little twist you make on the suspension it will make a difference so fellas and girls Get out there with your um, screwdrivers, uh, with your mates if you're not sure what you're doing, and sort your suspension out. Um, yeah, it will be uh, night and day, definite, definite, definite difference, guys. Well, start the engine, it's a little bit rattly, so yeah, that could be a dislike, I guess, but that's uh, a KTM thing that soon disappears when, once the engine is warm, and that might get a bit quieter after the first service when they put some new oil in. Now let's get on to the likes about this bike. There is an awful lot to like about this bike. Um, starting off the bat then, uh, the way that it handles, I've already mentioned about you need to set the suspension up. Once that's all done guys, this is the nicest handling bike I've uh, ridden. I've had GSX-R, Thousands, uh, Fireblades, um, and yeah, by far this is the nicest handling bike I've ever owned. Uh, but you need to sort that suspension out. Again, from the front to the back, the brakes are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you've got the uh, lever ratio span adjuster down here, 19, 20, 21. Mine's set at 19, and for, uh, for uh, road riding, that's uh, more than enough for me. The clutch has got a very nice feel to it, cable operated, uh, it's really good. Um, the gear shifter, uh, again, I've got the quick shifter selected off. I'm running the full electronics package on this, guys. The only thing I haven't paid for, basically, uh, is the full um, Acropovic uh, exhaust system. I've just got the slip on, as I mentioned before. Uh, but everything else I've got, heater grips, cruise control, and all the other tech pack, and all that crap that goes with it, which uh, that would be a dislike, actually. I should put that in the dislikes. KTM, why on earth do you sell an R bike and not put everything on it? That's absolutely absolutely outrageous you should be putting everything on the R version guys um, I can't remember how much everything it's got is that I've got on it has cost me but I'm gonna put something up here uh, and you can have a look at the uh, the cost there but yeah come on guys sort that out that's ridiculous the R version should have everything everything on it uh, comfort wise I don't know what the standard seats like because I haven't got that on I'm using the uh, original height comfort seat and that is great. Uh, the riding position is quite comfortable actually. It's sort of on the slightly sporty side but it ain't, uh, ain't too bad at all. Just do a little bit of a turnaround here without dropping the bike. Turning circle is not too bad. There's a big quarry we have over here. It's where they quarry all our local stone. And this is our motocross track. So the optional extra screen I've got, that seems to be okay. Again, I don't know what the bike's like without it, but that seems to be fine. Bearing in mind, our uh, speed limit over here is a lot slower uh, than your uh, national speed limits in the UK. Um, what else is there? I like the fact that it's just a straightforward ignition key. There's nothing electronic with it for the ignition or the uh, fuel tank filler. Well, that could be a dislike, the fuel tank filler. Uh, it opens the wrong way, shall we say. So if you want to get an aftermarket tank bag, uh, normally uh, the open end faces you. When you put it on, you have to put the open end uh, facing the clocks. Um, so that could cause a bit of an issue. I think there's a couple of videos of guys getting the bags and they, they moan about that. Why have they done that? The TFD screen itself is very good actually, although it's only five inch. I know it's a couple of years old now. The bike's been out since the 790. Um, but everything uh, you need is on there and in some ways it's not as big as some of the other screens and I guess possibly it means you're not going to be staring at it so from a safety point of view I guess that might be uh, a bit more of a bonus in fairness but yeah I think it gives you uh, enough information uh, more than happy with that uh, as well I've got the aftermarket mirrors on they seem to be fine as well so no complaints with that very easy to adjust and they don't move uh, once you're going at uh, faster speed shall we say the handling is just uh, absolutely amazing. I'm just not doing anything. The bike's sort of doing all its own work in fairness. 
um, it's just a great bike guys I can't uh, give it enough praises in fairness it's just absolutely brilliant uh, the fun factor that this generates well it's the most fun I've had for many years on a motorbike uh, I'm I'm gonna say I'm 55 I'm a bit an old git now um, sort of fell out of love of biking and this has certainly uh, put the big smile on my face and every review that you see of these machines uh, everybody is giggling about it uh, I haven't really seen any bad reviews of, about it in fairness it's just a great fun bike um, obviously a uh, potential downside is the reliability issue uh, hence the reason for the vlogs uh, we'll cross those bridges when I come to it but I think uh, the bike's got a lot of character and it may very well be that you can forgive it its uh, foibles uh, front sprocket oil leaks, uh, engine seal oil leaks, etc, uh, etc, et because it does have so much character. I mean, there we go, third gear now, and it's just, just pulling like a train. It's just a laugh and a half. There we go, back into the 15 mile an hour lanes now. And the bike's happy to do it, so yeah, you've got to sort that uh, fueling out, guys. Just run it for 15 minutes, it'll make a heck of a difference. The gearbox is nice and sweet when you come to a stop and you find neutral, doesn't seem to be a problem, it uh, goes in uh, fairly nicely. Uh, fuel range, uh, the fuel range on this is, bearing in mind where I am, up and down the gearbox all the time, uh, the, uh, the block style fuel indicator gauges, uh, when you get down to two blocks it will then, uh, when it's going on to the uh, get to a pet <coughs> petrol station very quickly, kind of scenario it goes to uh, amber blocks and basically you've got about 24 miles uh, to get to your petrol station to fill up so I think uh, from full to uh, having to push the bike to a petrol station you're looking in the region of 140 miles uh, minimum till you run out of fuel and that's bearing in mind I'm on an island uh, where we're up and down the gearbox all the time. Uh, heater grips, uh, they work really well, very impressed with those. Cruise, cruise control is brilliant, I love that. And the feeling from the heater grips, unlike like my Oxford ones on my Africa Twin, uh, they feel really good actually, just like standard grips, so you don't get any kind of unusual feel uh, from them. So yeah, very good. So, have I covered everything, chaps? I don't want to bore you guys stupid, I want to try and give you as much information as possible. Uh, but you can see the fueling is pretty much spot on. Uh, just tootling around here. I knew there was something else, always going to forget some. Tire pressure monitors on here. Uh, before we came out, I measured uh, the uh, tire pressure with my uh, manual gauge in the garage. Front was 33, rear was 40. And uh, before I started video recording, it did register 33.2 and about 40.6, although it's gone up a little bit now. So uh, the tyre pressure gauge the gauges on the bike uh, are very accurate, I would say. It's certainly reading the same as my uh, gauges uh, in, the, in my garage. Yep, that's it. Let's go and find the twisties.